In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. It's great to be back at St. Paul's. Today I'd like to preach about dinosaurs. The last of them, perhaps, died about 66 million years ago. How did they die? Perhaps by an asteroid about the size of Mount Everest. This asteroid hit here with an impact that released energy equivalent to 10 billion Hiroshima-sized bombs, 10 billion Hiroshima-sized bombs. That raised a cloud of deadly gases that hung around for years, radically changing the environment and making life unsustainable for dinosaurs. The biggest, most powerful species on Earth were no match for the asteroid. Now we come to St. Paul's today and we listen to Jesus saying to us, what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? What will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Perhaps these words apply to dinosaurs. Certainly, these words apply to us. Today, nine nations spend this past year, I'm sorry, today nine nations of the world are creating enough asteroids or nuclear weapons to guarantee that humans become extinct. The promise of nuclear, nuclear weapons is to gain the world, to gain security, to gain leverage over other nations, and while we're at it, to make a lot of money. How much money was spent this past year on nuclear weapons? $91.4 billion last year. A New York Times article this past week said, China's catching up with us, North Korea is catching up with us. We need to hurry up and spend more money. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and lose their life? How much damage do our bombs and our human-made asteroids intend. With nukes coming from silos, from submarines, from airplanes, and soon from space, if the United States and Russia engage in a nuclear war, 360,000, I'm sorry, 360 million people will die within 24 hours within 24 hours. According to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, five billion human beings will be dead in two years from, well, like the dinosaurs, from a cloud of deadly gases that radically change our environment and make human life unsustainable on Earth. Move over. Dinosaurs, here we go. In the recent presidential debate, eating dogs was mentioned, but neither candidate talked about nuclear weapons. <laughs> eating dogs, but not nuclear weapons. Goodness. One of those candidates will soon have his finger, her finger, poised over the button that will launch the world into an earth-canceling catastrophe. Isn't that enough 
to debate? The candidates don't want to talk about the consequential reality of nuclear weapons, and we don't want to listen. Or we don't want to think. Or we don't want to take the, accept the moral responsibility that accompanies possessions of these ultimate weapons. We just want the power, not the responsibility or the consequences. So we tolerate a conspiracy of silence about nuclear weapons. But aren't we a lot smarter than dinosaurs? Maybe not. Dinosaurs were around for 165 million years. Human beings have only been around 300,000 years. Dinosaurs made it a thousand times longer than humans to date. And we are dumb enough today to create weapons to kill us all, all of us, all, and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren forever. Nobody, no nation is pulling back from creating these nuclear weapons, these asteroids that are coming, uh, they're gonna come down. They're planned, they're planned to come down. On August 6th, 1945, in Hiroshima, human life on this planet was given an expiration date. Already, 99.9% of all species that have ever existed on Earth are extinct now. And yet we say, and, and we hear Jesus say, forfeit their life. And now we are throwing the dice, nuclear dice, on behalf of life on the remaining survivors of the species, including us. We are no longer masters of our fate. We are temporary tenders of our small earth garden. This planet is not a bottomless boon for our exploitation. Earth is our first, last, and only chance of sustaining life on this little planet that is floating around in a vast universe. Jesus' words quoted today amount only to a proverb. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? But beyond the proverb, his actions, his life, go further and speak more eloquently. He didn't sit on the sidelines. He walked directly into the crucifixion, the crossroad, the intersection between life and death. He did not want to gain the world. He wanted to sustain the world. He didn't come to enslave the world. He came to save the world. He said to his followers, us, pick up your cross and follow me. I can almost hear Jesus speaking to us at St. Paul's today saying, come on you dinosaurs, you can do better. As a matter of fact, you'd better do better. Amen.